Okay, thank you. Um, I will actually turn off my camera and go to the presentation mode. And then I will introduce myself. Let's see here. So can you see the screen? Yes, all good. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm Ulf Persor. I'm a network architect here in Smart Optics. Um, I'm based in, in Sweden where we have the development and uh, I work in the product management team. So uh, um, I'm kind of developing these products that we have and, and uh, um, I've been in the company for around two years. And before that I was working in Ericsson and Infinera uh, for similar uh, kind of solutions. So let's see what we are, have on the agenda today. Uh, I will first make a very short intro on Smart Optics as a company. Uh, I know that a lot of you already know about us. Uh, I think we more than 10 different IXs are, are already customers for, for us. Um, and uh, after the intro for the Smart Optics, I will talk about uh, 100 gigs and 400 gig uh, news. That is what is happening on the transceiver market and uh, for this year and for next year mainly. And then we'll look at what can we do on the system level. We can offer uh, passive systems and what's the limit, how far can we go with current kind of technology and new technology coming out in the next year. And then also after that, we will look at uh, to push the limits even more to go with a uh, line system, active line systems, open line systems for, for data centers. Uh, so that's the agenda for today. So I will start with this, the intro. So Smart Optics, we are a company that uh, have the development offices in Norway and Sweden. Uh, we are actually a Norwegian company where we are based on, on the stock market in, in Norway. And um, we also have a US office. Um, and then we also have a different uh, kind of sales offices around the world in different uh, places. Uh, today, we are around 90 employees in uh, different countries where we have the sales or where we have the development offices. Uh, and we are building the systems. Um, and we also have a business where we sell components or devices, optical devices, where it could be passive filters, it could be pluggable units, uh, transceivers, and, and uh, things like that. So we have both have a system business and a transceiver or, or device business. And we are a growing company. Uh, we, we always say that we are kind of one of the challenger in, in, the, in the gap of the market where you have the kind of the big three, four uh, kind of vendors that are making WDM systems. And then there is a kind of a gap for medium sized uh, companies that are in the WDM vendor business. And we are one of the challenger in, in that that kind of space. So one of the things that we, we are, are um, as a philosophy for our companies is that we are looking at uh, uh, IP over WDM as a kind of uh, future technology that we think will be uh, dominating so that you actually put the pluggables directly into switches and routers and run them over open line systems that can take uh, optical signals coming from any kind of, of uh, box and, and the vendor. So, so that's what, what is our philosophy. And uh, so we have both the, the systems, the line systems, and we also have the pluggables that we can sell that goes into the different kind of, of boxes. So, so that, that's our business. We also have a transponder uh, parts that can be used if they add some value to the system. So if we look at the first kind of, of segment or, or business, uh, that we have is the optical devices. And here you see some examples. We have the, the kind of the, the transceiver business with everything from one gig up to 400 gig coherent. Uh, we have uh, fibers, we have uh, tuning boxes that we are using to, to code different uh, codes to make them work as a compatible in, in different kind of, of uh, equipment. And we also have a number of, of passive components like filters or couplers and things like that that you see on the, on the bottom here. And then we have the system side. And on the system side, we have open line systems. As uh, we see here, we actually have three families, what we call the DCPM platform. This is what we are going to talk about uh, today a little bit on the open line system, because this is mainly for the 
a data center market uh, for point-to-point -point links. Uh, so I think that's where you are operating mainly. Uh, we also have a, in the middle here, the DCF platform or, or family. And the F stands here for flexibility. And in this case, you, you can take um, individual components and build them to a system. You can take one card as an amplifier, for example, another card is a rodem, and then you can build uh, your own system with uh, uh, kind of individual components. So that makes it it's flexible and you can maybe optimize the distance or the price and things like that. Uh, but it also requires some knowledge so that you can set the, the parameters in the right way. And then finally, we also have a rodem platform uh, that is, is new for this year that came out and uh, uh, that is possible then to build more complex uh, networks with uh, up to nine degrees on, on the nine different directions in, in, in a Rodan node. And together with the Rodan platform, we also have introduced a, a management system. We call this SoSmart. And uh, that one is today mainly handling the, the Rodan part, but later on we will also integrate the other managements uh, or, or the other um, optical line systems into that uh, management system. Um, as an option, if it's not possible to run embedded optics into the switches and routers, we also have these traffic units. We have some traffic units for 10 gig. We have traffic units for 400 gig PAM4, and we have 400 gig max bonder traffic units today. We'll see a little bit, little bit more on, on specifically the, the DCPM platform for the open line system, and some of the traffic units we will also mention here that can be interest for 400 gig or 400 gig. But to start with, we want to look at the, what's going on on what is new on the 100 gig and 400 gig market. So I created this kind of like a family tree, I call it. Uh, so we have one family that is the QSP28. So what's going on there on the 100 gig? And we have the QSP DD family, what's going on there? There are other form factors as well, like uh, CFP2s or OSFPs and things like that. Um, but I'm just in this case, concentrating on these two. Um, the OSFP uh, is following mainly the same track as the DD. And then the CFP2 is also kind of following this, the same kind of uh, development, but may, maybe sometimes a little bit ahead, six months ahead of, of the DD development. Then, then that's where we are on the uh, CFP2 uh, development, I would say. But starting on, on the QSP28, so this is of course 100 gig we're talking about when we are on QSP28. Today, if you want to do DWM on 100 gig, the only option is me, really the, the PAM4 option. So the PAM4 DWM, 100 gig in QSP28, that is available today and that has been available for a number of years. Um, and this is uh, cheap uh, technology for, for the kind of the, the transceivers themselves, but they don't have very good performance. So they always require a line system. So for example, the output power is minus 10, but the input power has to be minus two. Uh, so it means that uh, the, the, you come out with a lower power that you want on the receiver side. So obviously you, you need the line system to amplify with the power. And then there's also very limited uh, dispersion tolerance and uh, OSNR limits. So you will always need an active system to handle PAM4. Uh, so, so that is a drawback of, of, of that uh, technology. But if you have a lot of services, uh, then you could kind of spread out the cost for the line system on a lot of different uh, uh, kind of cheap optics like this. So it is still a, a business case that is, is valid today. Uh, a new thing that has came out on the QSPDD this year is something we call 100 gig LAN WDM, or it's a, optics in the O-band, it's around uh, 1300 nanometer. Uh, in this case, sorry, question? Okay, I will continue then. Um, so in the O-band, it's around 1300 nanometer. And the good thing about that is that in the 1300 nanometer, the dispersion is almost zero. So then the dispersion problem goes away. And there's also a little bit better uh, performance on the optical uh, budget on these new transceivers in, in the LAN WM. So you can actually build a passive solution for uh, yeah, up to 25 kilometers or so with this uh, LAN WM optics. So I, I will have a slide later on to show the details about this. So that's a new thing that can be done for 
small number of channels, but it's a completely passive solution. So it, it's, a, it's a cheap uh, option if you only want like four channels or so. Uh, but what we are waiting for really in the QTP28 space is to get a coherent DWM. And the coherent DWMs, they have been kind of uh, press released this year uh, that they are coming, but they are not available yet. Uh, so what we see here is that they will be available around uh, Q4 next year. Then we will have the first kind of, of coherent 100 gig QCP28 on the market. And then there is, of course, if you can put them into the switches and routers, then you can, can keep old uh, uh, systems uh, and go directly with coherent. Uh, but today, if you want to go uh, DWM coherent, you can do that through QCP DD. The DDs are actually available in 400 gig mode, but the 400 gig mode can also be set down to, to lower bit rates like 100 gigs or 200 gigs or 300 gigs. At least if you are looking at the 400 gig ZR optics, ZR plus versions that we have here. The ZR plus versions, they, they are a little bit more advanced than the ZR optics that we have here. The ZR optics is typically only 400 gig and not the multi-rate with, with different bit rates. And today, both of them are available and it has been available for, we have been selling them for more than a year, both the ZR optics and the ZR plus optics, they, they have been. But it has not been so many different suppliers during the, the last year, but that is changing now. And there will be a lot of different suppliers, especially on the ZR optics to, that will, uh, have um, kind of transceivers that they can, can uh, provide and, and create. For the ZR Plus, it is uh, uh, also growing with number of suppliers that can do this. Um, and the new things that are coming here on this, on this uh, DDs are that for the ZR optics, there will be a 100 gig version. So a little bit cheaper, like 20, 25% cheaper than the 400 gig option is that you can buy a 100 gig ZR. Uh, so that can go into uh, DD uh, ports where you only want to run 100 gig and you can run it then at a little bit lower price if you only want 100 gig. So that is available today. It's released and at GA. For the 400 gig ZR plus optics, uh, one little bit drawback on this has been that the output power has been like minus 10 dBm. And then you can't, it's difficult to go long distances, especially if you have a passive system, you can't go very long. And also sometimes when you have legacy systems that are optimized for 10 gig and, and uh, expecting a power level at zero dBm coming out. So when you come with minus 10, it will be special solutions like that. But uh, that is changing also. So in Q1, we will see 400 gig ZR plus optics with, I call it high TX power. High TX power in this case means around zero dBm. And if you have around zero dBm, you are similar uh, power level as, as on, on 10 gigs and, and uh, other NRZ optics. So that will fit better into legacy systems and it will also give you a 10 dB boost on passive systems that you can go longer distances or have more channels and things like that. So that is happening in the, in the near term. Uh, also in this uh, uh, QSPDD form factor, there will be the 400 gig open rodent standard will come. And the open rodent standard here will provide maybe not so much more uh, performance but it will give you more um, functionality. And the functionality that comes with open Rodem is that you can get uh, encryption. It's included in, in, the, in the plug. Uh, you can get uh, uh, OTN formats that can be supported in open Rodem, and you can get some embedded management channels also in this open Rodem. So uh, that what is kind of expected to, to be available around Q3 or Q4 next year, I would say. So a little bit more detail on, on some of the new uh, technologies here. If we're looking at this uh, PAM4 O-band or LAN WDM solution, we can see here that uh, uh, the TX power has been improved from other PAM4s. It's zero dBm instead of minus 10. Uh, RX powers can be down to minus 15. So we have a 15 dB power budget. It's using the certain 100 nanometer range. So the dispersion is not the big issue. Um, of course, in the certain 100 nanometer range, the attenuation on the fiber is a little bit higher than in the 50, 50 range. So 
together with some filter solutions and so on, we expect that the 25 kilometer reach is, is, uh, is possible on, on, on this kind of, of solutions. And in this range, there is actually up to 16 U-band channels that are, are defined in this range that have 200 gig spacing and the DWM kind of, of technology. Uh, some filters already exist in this range. Typically for 25 gig, there is this LAN WDM solutions. And um, so what we will start with here is that we will take simply LAN WDM filters and then use U-band transceivers that will match those filters. And here is an example with four channels then that, uh, that will be 400 gigs that can go directly into switches and routers with USB 28 port. So a very cheap solution for four times 100 gig on a passive solution that is, has a, yeah, a reach of, of around 25 kilometer. This, this is available today, has been uh, released. Uh, then what we are waiting for is this coherent DWM. And I said, this is end of next year, 2023. So here we will see that we will have a, a, like a 22 dB power budget, like minus eight on the transmitter, minus 30 on the, on the receiver side. And uh, so it will work very good for, for passive solutions. Uh, you can reach quite far with 22 dB, even if you add the filters and so on. Uh, up to 80 kilometer on the dispersion is possible. And it should be possible to, to, to use in, in um, existing ports if they can accept the little bit higher uh, power consumption. So we see here that around five watts in power consumption. I think the initial kind of USB 28 uh, ports, they were uh, defined for 3.5 watts. So you have to check if your uh, client equipment can accept the higher um, uh, power consumption if you want to use this kind of technology. And the same thing for the, the PAM4 optics. So on the 400 gig side, uh, we have some standards. We have the SEDAR standard, which is well-defined and, and uh, it's expected that if you take the, the optics from two different suppliers, they should interop in a, in a fairly good way uh, because it, it's defined. And also the performance, we should expect that the, the, the ones that you have in this range, they will have similar performance and, and can, can be designed in the, same, in the same way. If you go to the group, I've grouped now a little bit more than just the 400 gig open ZR, but all 400 gig ZR plus optics, I call it in, in, in a bigger group here. You have the open ZR plus things, uh, that, that uh, are the ones that are available today, uh, where you have better kind of OSNR and you have the multi rate and so on compared to the, to the SEDAR optics. And similar kind of performance you will get on the open road, then, but you will get this extra functionality like the, the encryption and the OTM and so on. And there is also in the same group some other features like uh, the Infineras Open XR optics that. Uh, has other features that, uh, but same kind of performance when it comes to, to transmission. In this group here, there, there are a number of different DSPs. There are a number of different settings that you can do on, on different optics and so on. And there is also a number of different CMIS versions for, for standard for, for how, what register you should read and where you get the information and so on. So here is not obvious that, that you can always take two different suppliers and then have a kind of interoperability between them. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> if you look at the, <clears throat> the DDs, <clears throat> sorry. If you look at the, the NQs with DDs, we have the, the ZR and plus optics coming with a high power version, the zero dBm, as I talked before. And today it is minus 10. So this will be a 10 dB improvement for, for passive optics. And it will also be improvement for, for some other legacy systems that cannot handle the minus 10. So that is expected to, to happen in Q1, 2023. Uh, that will be supported, I think, in, in most switches and routers because it, it will be 
similar to, to the uh, 400 gig setup plus that is already on the market, but with a lower power. And we will also have uh, traffic cards that will, that will support this technology. On the open road side, uh, it will be, as I said, the same performance. It will be multi-rate. You can set 400 gigs, 300 gig, 200 gig, 100 gig, and so on. But there will be more features like encryption, OTM, and some embedded management channel options. And those will also come with a zero dBm output power. So similar as this high power optics that we have on the, on the left side. So we just stopping a little bit. Any questions on the 100 or 400 gig optics that is coming? Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Um, with the 100 gig PAM4, uh, which we have, um, we're able to extract optical statistics out of the uh, um, out of the transceiver we're running Arista EOS. Um, is that going to be available to other 100 gig um, uh, solutions like the OBAN stuff, for instance, because that's quite useful for us to be able to extract information about SNR and what's happening down there in the in the in the FEC and so on. It, it, do you think that will become available with the other single lambda products as well? Y yes, I would think so because it's using the same kind of registers and and it should be possible to mm. to report the same data for for sure. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, electrical SNR is of course important on and, and the FEC bits and so on. So, mm. I, uh, yeah, we yeah. we found that we process all that data and graph it, and it's super useful because we know if an optic is starting to go bad, and we can just replace it before it has any impact on 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 the network. And that's that's a really nice feature for us. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Thanks. Okay. Very good. Um, then I will go on to the passive systems just to see what can be possible if we want to do 400 gig or 100 gig on, on, on this optics. Uh, <clears throat> starting off with a little bit technical slide here, just showing what kind of different options we could have. There are many different filters that you can select, different sizes and so on. And uh, just to, to show here that, yeah, that the more channels you want to have on your filters, typically the higher loss you will get. So if you go from a four channel filter, you have a link loss here of, of the combined loss at 3.6. If you go to an eight channel, maybe 4.6. If you go to a 40 channel, you have 11 dB loss here as the maximum loss for, for this kind of, of filters. Uh, and then I also put in the LAN WM here that is in, in the O band case, around 3 dB loss. Uh, so if we are looking at uh, different optics down here, the PAM4, for example, the PAM4 DWM in the C-band, uh, that one, as I said, for a passive solution is not possible because the transmitter is minus 11 and you need a minus two for the receive side. So you can't put any filters. You can't even go on, on the fiber connected back to back to back uh, because you need more input than you have output. So that's not possible. On the O-band, then we have this 15 dB to work with. And uh, if we, uh, use a filter, a four channel filter, for example, we have a 3.6 dB loss. And then we can see that, yeah, there is a, a power budget for the fiber that we can, can use here. Um, and, and that's uh, what we see over here. Uh, for eight channels, we, we don't have filter solutions or 40 channels are put just not available there. Um, if we want to go to uh, the 100 gig SEDAR optics, which is then uh, with the QCP DDs or later on the QCP 28s, we see that then these are coherent. They have a little bit better performance, much uh, better. And if you look here, you can go to four channel, eight channels or 40 channel filters and still have quite, quite a lot of, of uh, power budget or for, the filter, for the fiber side. So this is the allowed fiber loss that you can have. I mean, 23 dB for fiber loss. And if you have 0 0.25 dB per kilometer, this is more than 80 kilometer, almost 100 kilometer that you can go on, on this kind of optics with just a passive system. So obviously a coherent 100 gig has much better performance uh, than, than the, the PAM4 optics. So an example here of, of the O-band, it could be combined, not just using the, the O-band filter like this uh, that we have here on the top. It could be combined also with maybe a 15, 50, 13, 10 nanometer splitter. And if you do that, you could use this four channel from the O-band running here on the 1310 port 
and you can have an upgrade for the 1550 where you can put the full C-band DWM system with up to 40 channels on that port uh, that you can maybe uh, save for, for later. And that could be yeah, different things. In this example, it's a 10 gig network, but it could be uh, 400 gigs there as well, or 100 gigs coherent running in that, uh, that side. So it's possible to combine these kind of things to, to build the bigger systems, not just having a four channel if, you, if that is a limitation. Uh, but looking at the 400 gig on the passive side, um, we see here that we have filter or, or the bandwidth of our 400 gig signal is uh, typically like 60, 65 gigahertz wide and the same or a little bit wider actually on the ZR Plus, with, which is um, more effects and, and, and things like that. Uh, and that if you compare that to original or, or to 100 gig signals or 10 gig signals and so on, they are much smaller or, or, or more narrow. In the, in the bandwidth. Uh, so what implication is, is that then? Well, if you have filters that were kind of deployed 10 years ago or something, no one was thinking about that you, you might want to have a 400 gig signal that is the double width than, than a 100 gig signal or a 10 gig signal. So uh, they are typically not defined for, for this kind of, of, of bandwidth. And if, if you just take a filter and uh, which is undefined and measure it, you will probably see that it's around 60 gigahertz or something in the bandwidth for the 3DP bandwidth, I would say. Uh, that uh, might work if you have a, if you are lucky and, and they are it's centralized exactly uh, over the, 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 the DWM channel and so on. So, so it might work for a while, but if you have a temperature difference or if you have a misalignment on the, on the wavelengths, it's uh, kind of drifting or so. Uh, that will for sure be a lot of penalty and, and uh, uh, probably a bit errors also after a while. So those filters are, are not good enough for, for 400 gig. So it is required to have filters with, with uh, bigger bandwidth. The other thing is that, of course, the, the 400 gig ZR optics today, uh, when you have an uh, output power of, of minus 10 or minus 11, and you have an input power of minus 20 as, as a receiver budget, uh, there is just 11 dB budget to work with. And if you take two filters here, uh, 40 channel filters, they have around 12 dB loss. So then you can't really run a passive solution with the 400 gig ZR plus optics if you want a lot of channels. Uh, so that is also an, a challenge. But uh, those can be fixed now, uh, those challenges. So the first thing is, of course, uh, to, for the filter to uh, define filters that have a better kind of 3db bandwidth. Uh, so we have created a range of filters that uh, are going from two channels to four channels, eight channels, and, and even the 40 channel versions that are uh, have a bandwidth with around uh, between 70 or 75 gigahertz on the 3db bandwidth. So that will be good enough to, to run 400 gig signals without uh, penalties. Uh, and then also for, the, uh, for this power budget, uh, the ZR optics, we will come now with a high power versions and the high power versions will add another 10 dB to the budget. And then of course we can then go through these 40 channel filters and still have some loss left for the, uh, for the fiber. So, uh, so that is, is helping in, in those cases. So here's more details about the, the bandwidth to, to kind of visualize this in a better way. So old 10 gig signals were very narrow, like 12.5 gigahertz in the 3dB bandwidth like this. Um, we have the 100 gig QPSK versions. They were around 30 to 35 gigahertz wide in this range. And then we have the, the 400 gig signals now coming with a 60 to 65 gigahertz 3dB bandwidth. And with the same kind of, of optics, if you buy this 400 gig optics, you can also set it into 300 gig mode or a 200 gig mode. Uh, but in those modes, the signal is also wider like this. So if you go 200 gig QPSK or, or 300 gig uh, uh, 8 qam or so, then you, you will also have the same bandwidth problem. So you need the bigger filters. And here is an example of, of different filters that we have for, uh, for this bandwidth. So it's something to think about if you want to have passive systems, you have to have a filter that can handle 400 gig. And if you have that, 
then we can go back to this example again to see how far can we go with different number of channels and taking these uh, different optics. If you take the ZR and the ZR plus optics on the passive solution, they have more or less the same performance. They have the output power minus 10 and they have the receiver around minus 20, so like around 10 dB budget. If you take these filters and then calculate what is the remaining loss that you can have on, on, the, on the fiber itself, you can see that yeah, for a four channel system, you can get some uh, 6 dB loss on the, on the fiber. Uh, so, uh, and if you have a eight channel, you go down one dB, but you can't do the 40 channel really because it, it's not enough power budget. So those, uh, those are limited to, to small channel counts, unless you have a, an active system where you put amplifiers and so on. But with the high power optics, it is actually possible with a, with a passive solution to get some power budget, even for the 40 channel system here, that we can see that we, we have some 9 dB loss to, to work with. So um, maybe up to around 40 kilometer reach is something that you could get in a passive system if you have the high power optics. Of course, the high power optics includes extra amplifiers in the optics, so it will cost you a little bit more than the actual the ZR optics or the ZR plus, ZR plus optics that we have here. So a little bit extra uh, the cost. Uh, so it's a, always a trade-off if it's better to buy uh, an active line system uh, and then have a lot of, of uh, kind of cheaper optics, or if you have a passive line system and you have the more costly optics on the, that one. So there is a somewhere there's a trade-off for how many channels that will make sense for, for each of these solutions. So coming to the next thing, uh, what if your switches and routers cannot support uh, the DWM? They can only support gray optics. Uh, well, in this case, we could offer solutions and still make use of, of the, uh, the 400 gig technology, because if you can go to the, to the higher, uh, higher bit rate, you can get a bit better price per bit. So that is the, the main advantage for going to a higher bit rate. So if you can utilize a 400 gig optics in 400 gig mode, that will be the best kind of price per bit. Um, so if you only have gray optics on the 100 gig, you could use a max bonder card. So in this case, we call this max bonder DCP 404. So it's a card that will take four 100 gig signals on the client side, and it will aggregate them into 400 gig line side DWM on the, on the line side. Uh, and this is using QSB DD on the line side here and QSB 28 on the client side. And for the QSB 28, we can then match what you have on, on your router. It could be cheap optics here, gray optics, maybe SR4 optics for, for, uh, for multi-mode or LR4 or CWM4, uh, any kind of technology that you, you, you need here. Uh, maybe even some DAC cables or active optical cables or things like that can be, be used in, in that space. Um, also, I have heard now that on the market, some of the switches and routers, they have the even smaller form factor, the SP56 form factor. And uh, those kind of optics, they are running in slightly different formats when it comes to the, uh, the 100 gig mode uh, on the uh, QSB 28 is typically that you, you have the, the kind of the four lanes, 25 gig, like SR4, LR4, and CWM4. But here is the single lane optics on the SAP 56. So it's like DR, FR, LR optics that you can run here. And, but that is also available in QSB 28. And we have support for that also in the Max Bonder. So it doesn't matter if you have QSB 28 or SAP 56 ports on your equipment. It's still possible to, to make use of the the 400 gig optics and take advantage of the, of the price per bit if you use this uh, max bonder. So a card like this fits into a uh, one rack unit chassis. This one rack unit chassis can actually take two cards. This is shown here in the picture that this is taking one slot and you can put another equal card on, on the other side here if you want. And then you have 800 gig in, in a one rack unit uh, box. So what can happen here? Um, you could actually, uh, if you, since we are using QSV DD, that's a little bit different from many of the competitors on the on this transponder or max bonder card. Uh, many other competitors are using CP2s, and the CP2s they usually cannot be used in the switches and routers. But here we have a kind of an, an upgrade scenario that uh, we could 
when you only have the 100 gig optics, you will start with a max bonder like this. Uh, you will connect QSP28, use the, 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 the kind of the gray optics to connect to this max bonder, and you will use the coherent line side on that max bonder. Um, then later on, you will upgrade your switches and routers to 400 gig mode. And what will happen then is that you could take away the, the max bonder card and you can reuse the, the kind of expensive part, which is this QSP DD. So you can take that max, this QSP DD port, put it, take it from the max bonder and put it into the switches and routers. So if you have the other option, if you already have the 400 gig uh, kind of switches and routers, but they don't support the kind of the, the, the uh, DWM optics that you want to use, uh, then we also have an option or we'll have an option. This is a new card that is coming in, in Q1 next year. Uh, so then we have an option that you could uh, convert gray 400 gig signals into DWM coherent 400 gig signals. So this is the transponder card that we have. It's actually on one card, there's three transponders. You can actually convert three 400 gig signals that comes with gray optics here in the router into uh, three coherent DWM signals, 400 gig coming out from, from one card. And also this card takes one slot into a chassis like this. So you can take two cards and put it into a, a one rack unit chassis. So you can then have up to, to six uh, 400 gig signals into one, uh, one chassis. Okay, so before we go to the next part, any questions on uh, the kind of the passive solutions or, or uh, the traffic cards that I've shown here? Okay, seems not. Then we go to the next. <laughs> so if we cannot reach with the uh, passive solutions, then we need a, an active line system. And uh, especially, as I said before, if you have the PAM4 optics, it's always required to have an open uh, or an active line system. And what we have done here with uh, what we call the DCPM family is that we have created uh, um, kind of a disaggregated one rack unit box that includes all the components that you need to handle the, the the kind of the issues or, or the problematics that you will uh, see when you run a PAM4. Uh, the low output power from the transceiver is, is handled by, by having a, a booster amplifiers. Uh, the uh, kind of the high input power that you need on the, on the other side is handled by having pre-amplifiers. The dispersion tolerance problem is handled by, by having tunable dispersion compensation. And if you are mixing different signal formats, it's even an equalizer inside the box that will handle different input powers from 10 gigs and, and PAM 4s and, and other signals. Uh, so the box is, is also almost like a zero touch provisioning uh, because if you insert signals on, the, on the, this kind of filter port, uh, the box will automatically uh, recognize the signals. It will look at the signal kind of shape and, and, and so on spectrum and then recognize if, if, if this is a coherent signal or it's a PAM4 signal or a non-return to zero 10 gigs or, or 16 gig signal. And depending on what signal format it has, it will set the, the, the power levels automatically for that, uh, that is needed for that signal format. Uh, it will also measure the distance between the, uh, the links here to tune in the dispersion compensation to the right level. And it will also measure the loss between the, the nodes and it will automatically set up uh, variable attenuators and amplifiers to, to have the right setting to reach the, the, uh, the distance and the attenuation that is on this particular link. So everything is starting up automatically in, in, a, in, in this box. Um, usually you, you want to go in and, and set the IP address and maybe some SNMP traps for, for alarms and so on to and maybe to monitor some, some parameters. But uh, for kind of configuring uh, the, the channels, you don't have to do anything if you if you are following kind of the, the standard rules on, and distances for this box. And it's really an, a true open line system. We don't have any licenses for running an alien channel or a transponder or, or, or so. 
every optical signal will come into a port and it will be handled in the same way without any licenses. We have a few different kind of models of the same kind of, of uh, system. Uh, and that is mainly because we have different dispersion compensation needs. Uh, we, we have a tunable dispersion compensation that can do from zero to 40 kilometer. In the first box, the ER box, we have this unit only, so you can go from zero to 40 kilometer. If you go a little bit longer distance, you need an extra compensation. And then we have this ER plus version where you have a fixed 20 kilometer plus the, the tunable one that is 40. So you can go to from 20 to 60 kilometer with that. Uh, ER plus version. And then we have the SEDAR optics where you can go even up to 80 kilometer because then we also have a fixed 40 kilometer uh, compensation that is in the box. So we have solutions for all different kind of systems for point to point that are from zero up to 80 kilometer when it comes to PAM4 optics, I, I should say, because if we have if we don't have PAM4 and just coherent signals, we can go much longer and we can make it uh, in a different way that we'll see very soon here. So as long as we follow the, the distance requirements and the attenuation requirements here, we can put in any kind of signal format here that anything from, from one gig, 10 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig fiber channel, uh, 40 gig, uh, PAM 400 gigs, 400 gig coherent, anything goes into the same box and it will be automatically set up if you run it like this and follow those rules. So very easy to, to design, very easy to operate and uh, yeah, to maintain. For coherent signals only, we have a box that is specialized for that. We could uh, make this box a little bit cheaper because we don't need it, the tunable dispersion compensation anymore. And we don't need a very strong preamplifier because the, the power, we can accept a little bit lower power on, on a coherent signal than we can on the PAM4. So this is a box optimized for coherent signals. And otherwise it's in the same philosophy, uh, very easy to, to use. You don't, it's uh, fully automatic. It will, will recognize the signals, set the power levels, uh, set the, 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 the link uh, uh, variable attenuator and, uh, and all of that. So same kind of, of uh, functionality, but optimized for coherent. Uh, and that has been very popular in the uh, in the IX business so far, because you could use SEDAR, uh, 400 gig SEDAR optics directly in switches and routers, and you can go far, quite far here. In this case, when you use this coherent only, you can go up to 26 dB. And uh, yeah, depending on what loss you have on your fiber, the distance here can be, be uh, calculated. And to get a little bit further, you can use the SEDAR plus optics to actually increase this uh, distance a little bit if you want. So, so this is a very popular box for, for, uh, uh, for coherent systems where you use IP over WDM simply. So before I go to the summary, any questions on, on these open line systems? Okay, very good, go to the next. Uh, so as a summary for today, what we have talked about um, today, mainly if you want to have DWM in QSP28 form factor, you can only buy PAM4 optics because the, the coherent QSP28 is not coming until late next year. So this is available and there you need a system to, to handle PAM4 optics. Uh, we have been seen this year that Q, 400 gig QSP DDs a SEDAR version and SEDAR plus versions. They are selling in large volumes in 2022. This has been the year for, for 400 gig, really. We have seen a big uh, increase in that uh, uh, for our sales. Um, 400 gig uh, requires special filters because they have this wider bandwidth. So you, you have to be kind of aware that your filter is, is good enough to, to support 400 gig. Uh, we have those kind of filters, but you always have to check if you're using other filters, if those can handle 400 gig. Um, for higher capacity or longer reach, you can use active systems, open line systems that can uh, amplify signals and things like that. Um, and from smart optics side, we are playing in all these kind of fields. 
We have pluggable optics. We are selling the transceivers. We have 400 gig, 100 gig transceivers, QSP 28s, QSP DDs, a lot of different versions and, and, uh, and brands. And we can also do this co compatible optics and, and code these kind of, of units so that they can be used in, in different systems. And we have uh, quite a lot of, of experience when we have tested this uh, interoperability in, in different uh, switches and routers that we can share with you if you have any, any questions. Uh, we have the passive filters that are ready for 400 gig. We have them available. Uh, we have this max bonder and transponder cards for 400 gig. If that is needed, if you cannot do the IP with the WDM directly, you can always use a card and that's available. And we also have the open line systems. And one of them I showed here in the, in the presentation was the DCPM version, the, the kind of point to point uh, purpose built zero touch provisioning version. So this was my, my last slide. So I can take any other questions now, if, if you have. Thank you, Ulf. Um, are there any questions? Hello, it's yeah. Will from Ron Up again. Um, I was looking at your um three-way transponder within it has three pairs of 400 gig uh yeah yes this one. yes this one yeah um do you think you could use the you've got the gray side with the 400 gig do you think you could use that as a breakout to individual 100 gigs if you put in a mpo yeah, yeah. optic yeah, yeah yes that that is also possible because oh, okay uh, yeah because we will use dd uh porch mm -hmm. both on the client and on the line side here so 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 that is possible to take a for an again breakout on 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 the on, on the great because I guess that would that could make it replace the previous product kind of yeah uh, yes yeah. in 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 a way yes that that mm. uh, could could give that option yes oh great thanks yeah okay um another question actually um the uh hundred gig O band um. Yes. Did you have some availability for that? Do you have those optics in the lab, or or when do you think they will ship? Or yes, they they are released actually. So so oh, okay, right, yeah. So so that that is available. Uh, okay. Let's see where, where I have it. Yes. So uh, here, this one. So so this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the optics, the, the transceivers, they are released. The filters are released. So this system you can uh, you can buy already. I think that would be really that could be really good in the internet exchange markets. There's a lot of people with, you know, nearly all of our links are sub 25 kilometers actually, and uh, that's just pretty yeah. interesting. I think. Yeah, I, I've seen in some cases that you even use kind of in-house solu DWM solutions or or kind of solutions to to save fiber connections and things like that. So uh, this could yeah. be this this could be an option <laughs> for for in-house solutions even. Yes. Yeah, actually, in some cases, we've been upgrading to 400 gig early because 400 gig is just getting more out of even quite short fibers. So um, if this had been available a little earlier, that could have been useful. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh, that's good to know that it's it's uh, it's it's available now. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a really maybe... good presentation, actually, with lots of information. So thanks for that. Okay, thanks. Maybe one note from my cell side here, Andre from B6. Uh, we, we have ordered those OBAND uh, DWDM, um, uh, both the Max Ponders and uh, the, the, the Maxis and the, so the filters and the uh, optics. Uh, we are going to try them uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. We currently have a delivery date for February for the optics. The, the filters are, have already arrived. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yes. I'll, I will talk to you, Andre, and see how you get on. Yeah. Yeah. My my, my plan is to to present something for the uh, next UX uh, forum. Mm. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, thanks, Paul. Any uh, any more questions for Ulf? No. All right. Um, in that case, uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, and thank you to all for the presentation and of course, Smart Optics for their continued support 
um, as uh, patrons of your IX. So thank you everyone and uh, we'll see you all soon. Take care, bye. Yeah, thank you.